Hey guys, it's Rich again. Uh, for those of you who have watched my last video, I think it was like labeled questioning vlog or something like that. Uh, I can't ever remember what I what I named these things. I mentioned that I was having some trouble with my homosexuality and my practice with uh, with a deity that is primarily known within the Christian community not to support homosexuality. And shortly after I posted that, Markwood90, uh, his name is Evan, if you're not subscribed to his channel or if, and if you're a Christian Wiccan and haven't looked at his channel, you need to because he does have a lot of cool stuff on there. And I've watched a good bit of his videos. I haven't watched them all, and mostly it's because of the the move and everything that I haven't gotten a chance to watch the rest of his videos. But it is on he his channel is on my short list of ones to watch. <clears throat> and uh, he contacted me, and we talked for probably a good hour or so about. Christo pagan Wiccan type things, whatever you want to label it. The Christian melding with the more magical, let's say. <clears throat> and uh, we talked about all kinds of things, not only the homosexuality issue, um, and he was a huge help. I also asked him about using other deities in my practice, and he said, uh, that he's actually been struggling with the same thing. And so, and if you're wondering what my right arm is doing, it's actually petting Coda right now because he won't be quiet unless I pet him. I don't know why. Maybe it's a full moon. But uh, he said that he, he was kind of struggling with the same question and because a couple of, of goddesses and gods have come to him and said, hey, do you need help with this? Or do you want help with this? And... He was kind of, he was kind of struggling with whether or not to use those deities because of the commandment, you know. Uh, and I'm gonna butcher this, and I know I will because I even butchered it on the phone. Is uh, put no other gods before me, something to that effect. It's like the first commandment, so I mean it's a pretty big one to a lot of people who say that you should only be monotheist. It's the the big commandment that people go to. And, you know, I, I'm i sitting there and I'm thinking, and he says, well, I'll put no gods ahead of him. Like, revere no gods, you know, other than him. Or not, not other than him, but revere no gods as more important than him, basically, is is what we were getting at, and I kept on thinking about that, and it's been in the back of my mind, and I, and, well, I want to tell you this, too, but, yeah, let me tell you this one first. Yesterday, during the ritual that I, I did to make my altar room mine, I mean, I, I cleansed the hell out of it, I'm, I made sure like that if you were walking into there you were walking onto holy ground and that is what my altar room is to me is it is in fact holy ground that is where that is where the magic happens <laughs> so in, in in all actuality that is where you should feel the most safe and so I cleanse that in every single different way I knew how, and with sage and with uh, juniper uh, berries, empowered even more by dragon's blood. Yes, that and uh, different symbols that were made with the uh, with the smoke of the incense. I mean, it is a pretty consecrated altar room so but afterwards I I sat down and I'm meditating to my God and my ancestors and I said how do I deal with this 
homosexuality issue because I actually did this video or the the video that I posted the, earlier today I did that last night and uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting there I'm thinking how can I deal with this issue and it kept on weighing on my mind for so long and I, I finally got my answer and it came to me much as whenever I joined the military the voice of God came to me in a small voice, in a low voice. But this wasn't exactly His. Because I know my God's voice, and I know what He feels like. Because I've been with my God for so long, I know His presence. <clears throat> I know what He feels like, I know what... It, how he sounds. It's like a familiar relative, you know, talking talking to them face to face or even on the phone, you know it's them. But this one was different. And uh, I was sitting there in deep meditation. Well, pretty deep. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't even have the intention of, of like putting my whole body to rest and everything and it came to me very suddenly it was kind of a deep meditation. I guess it wasn't totally deep, if that makes any any sense to you. I probably just contradicted myself on nine levels. But this voice came to me and it was real low, real soft, and says, and, and I, I said, will my God love me if I'm still homosexual? And this voice says to me, I will love you. And I didn't know whose voice it was, and, and I was anxious to see whose voice this was. And I'm going along, and I heard it about two or three times, which the number three is very powerful for me. Um, it's the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It's the threefold law. I mean, it, the power of three goes on for ages. You can continue researching that. Uh, but this voice came to me. It was about three times, two or three times it came to me. And then I saw, in my in my mind's eye, I saw the this God that I can only assume was Pan. Now, the only difference between him and the Pan that is most... Uh, mostly portrayed is that he didn't have, well, a couple differences. He didn't have the big goatee like you usually see. He was kind of younger. Um, he still had like the goat ears and the horns. And he had the hooves. But his his legs were not necessarily goat legs. His legs kind of had a mossy green or a actually more of a vibrant green than a mossy green but it, it seemed like leaves or something like that on his legs and the only deity that I could think of that that would be would be Pan because of the the facial features but he looked like a young Pan not one that you see in most of the the artwork portrayed and I, I said, well, that, that's that got to be him. That's the only one that I know that looks like that. So, I mean, it's a pretty distinct look. And uh, I told that, I told this to Evan, and he says, well, you know what? That's pretty, uh, that's pretty significant that you actually had that vision, that he came to you and said that because Pan has had homosexual relations before. And I got to reading, and in fact, he did. Because as much as I I do trust what other people say, I always, always go back and, you know, review the facts. Go to... Shh. Quiet. And, uh... So, yes, there, there was a... At least one instance where Pan, uh... He beloved, I, I believe the way that you pronounce it is Delphin. And 
he taught him how to play the pan flute. And even though pan was more uh, towards the nymphs and the feminine nymphs, the this one in this one document documented story of Delphin really kind of struck me. I said, you know what? Here's what I may do. And I've never done this before. But the next time that I hold a ritual, I may invite him in. I will not put him on the pedestal that I put my my own personal god on, quite frankly, because to me there is none higher than that one god that I've always known, or that I've I have for so many years known and been in touch with. And to me that is, he is a powerful god. Whether you say it's a he or she or an unknown gender, this god is the god that I have worshipped for so many years and I don't plan to put any, you know, higher than him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my god candle, my ancestral candle, and a pan candle in the middle. And I will I will invoke him into my circle and have my god and pan and I will see what happens. The, uh, I guess what I'm actually getting at here is that I am finally kind of prepared to use other deities, which I have never done before. It scares me to death to think of something different like that. It's, it is shaking my faith to the core which is always a good thing. Having your faith shaken is like, you know, realizing what you have. And realizing what you have makes you appreciate things more. But it is also with nervousness and trepidation that I go into this only because it's something unknown. It's a leap of faith. And being very much an Earth type, I want to be sure that I, that I do this in the most correct way for me. So, with that I give you guys another challenge. And thank you for the responses that I got on my last video, by the way. Um, but I give you guys another challenge. What do you think about this new twist that my my path is going in? Uh, it is it is new. It is different. It is deep, and it's nothing I've ever tried or ever thought I'd try. But I think I might be prepared for it. So, there's your challenge. Uh, and, uh, see what you think. So, until next time, may your ancestors be with you. Bye.